you doing everybody? Welcome back. Uh, Tinker here. And today we're going to be putting back together this carburetor. Um, it should go a little bit faster. Uh, video should be a little bit uh, shorter for this one because, you know, we know what we're doing, putting it back together as opposed to taking it apart where you're kind of discovering things and, and, and hitting spots that we didn't quite know. So this will be fun. First things first, we're going to take our power valve and put it back into its spot. Now the torque spec, well, first, before that you're going to find your gasket. Locate your gasket, throw it on there, and make sure it's going to sit center. I'll keep it straight up and down as you put it on. And now the torque specs for this power valve are 40 to 50 inch pounds. Now, I don't have a way to measure inch pounds, but when I took this off, the little 6.5 was facing directly up and down. So that's what I'm going to do here. And now it's facing directly up and down. That is in place. <clears throat> From there, I'm going to locate the gasket that goes on this side which would be this gasket right here. To know if your gasket is on the right way, there's these two little pins here that'll fit in. So if I put this on backwards like I originally did, gasket's not going to fit on. This one side will, but the other one will not. You don't want to put that on the right way. That's how you can tell if your gasket's on the right way. I want to verify that we've got a good surface. So what we did in the last video was we took a Dremel and a wire wheel and just lightly went over the surface to make sure that there was no residual gasket you know stuck onto here and make sure it fits flush before you start putting your screws in there screws that these use are these little slotted ones just like that and we can look in the book to see if there's any sort of torque specs on those no torque specs for these screws here and you don't really have to tighten it all that much anyways because they're pretty much as tight as they go when you hand tighten them. So after these screws are on, I'm gonna locate the next gasket and figure out the orientation that that goes. Now again, there's gonna be some pins here. You're gonna to wanna to line up to guarantee that you've got it on the correct way. Again, if you put it on upside down, these pins are not gonna line up right. And then your fuel bowl can go on like so there these big screws here along with these little gaskets go right there and these giant long screws go in that hole like so now what Wildman's doing off camera here is taking these old screws because they reboot kit does not give us any new ones and he's using that dremel and wire wheel to clean up these threads to make sure that this is going to be a good, nice, uh, get a good, nice seat in on the other threads inside this carburetor. That way, it makes it just that little bit easier to thread in. And I can do it with one finger. After we get them all in, we'll look for uh, torque specs. Now, I don't believe, uh, you know, actually look for those now. I don't believe there are any. Again, no torque specs which is fine, meaning we will go tight enough to secure this down, but not any tighter. You definitely want to use more than just your hands on this because this is dealing with uh, fuel and, and you really don't want it leaking. A, a good, nice snug until it's not going to move anymore is generally pretty good. The last gasket and the last screw going in, you can go ahead and tighten these down. Now with these being new gaskets, uh, the last ones were flush uh, on here. So it's going to take a little bit of turning to get these down to where the last ones are. But with heat and this carburetor being used, these will expand, kind of melt down a little bit and seat themselves in there afterwards. So after your engine runs for a couple hours or so, um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to tighten these down on the motor. Uh, another thing 
uh, to make sure you've got a good seal. Don't tighten these, uh, you know, one, two, three, four. It's a good idea to go diagonal corner to corner to make sure you've got a good clamp down on this carburetor and on that gasket as well. Kind of the same concept of tightening lug nuts. Yeah. As soon as you have to use any sort of muscle, you can quit. You don't need to go any much tighter than that. Yeah. And that is this side of the carburetor installed with the new gasket. So we'll move on to this side. Now this side does not have a power valve, so we don't have to worry about that with this side. But the same thing applies. You want to make sure that your gasket is going on the right way. Now this side on the uh, center part of the carburetor does not have any sort of pins, so we want to do our lining up of that section on this portion. Now again, if your gasket is on wrong, like I put this one on wrong, it's not going to fit and the holes aren't going to line up. What you want to do is flip it over, and as you can see, those two pins are now protruding through, showing that it lines up correctly. Screws that go in there, just like the other side. Now these don't hold it down, but since we did take them out, we want to put them back in. Because they do obviously serve some purpose. Hand tight is very close to as tight as these things will go, so you won't have to turn your screwdriver very much. And here we can take our other fuel bowl and the gasket from here, insert that on the right way. Now the other one, I did not show you what it looks like when it's on the wrong way. So if it's on the wrong way, none of these pins are going to line up except for these to at least four on each corner. None of these other pins will line up. It'll be protruding. It's just not going to sit right. You want to flip it around so that all these pins will line up the correct way. And then you can throw your fuel bowl on top. We'll take our gaskets, set them on just like we did the other side. Thanks to Wild Man, these screws are going in very, very easily. He's a beast with that Dremel, I tell you what. Almost like he knows how to use it. Did you put the fuel bearing in there? I'm keeping that part in, because he had me fooled there for a second, talking about a fuel bearing. He had me thinking I did something wrong. Now there are actually bearings in here, and I'll get to showing you that in a second. That's why he had me confused. One thing Wild Man did say, he didn't want to completely remove the humor, but we are going to make our channel a lot more informational. They say I'm a funny guy, but looks aren't everything. Now if you guys are worried about cross-threading screws or bolts, a general rule of thumb is if you can't do it by hand, then it's probably cross-threaded. And you should back it out, try it again until you can screw it in by hand. Now there are some exceptions to this. Um, really tight tolerances are gonna require tools. Uh, now this is not one of those cases. Now with that done, we can move on to pump disc nozzles. Now there's numbers stamped onto the sides of these nozzles. One being the number 25 and the other being the number 28. Now when taking this off, it just so happens that the smaller number was on the side with the smaller uh, post here and the bigger number was on the side with the bigger post. Now something that you guys might not uh, realize is inside of the holes where you screw in those uh, pump disc nozzles are two needles. Now these can be very easily lost. They go in point down and they go in just like so. Take your 28 and there's a little groove in here that will line up with these two prongs on the pump disc nozzle. And you want to line that up when you put it on. Now we are going to put the gasket on there. It's almost a little shim in a way. It's a metal gasket. And that goes on and we can tighten down the screw that holds everything in place. Now on older models, um, and this is not one of those, there's actually a bearing that goes down in here as well. Uh, this one, no bearing came out of it and we're not going to put a bearing into it because there's not enough space for it, meaning this one did not come with one. Uh, the gasket kit comes with a couple different sizes. A bigger bearing for the accelerator pump, there's actually a bearing down in here that we're not gonna mess with because our tolerances are fine. It's a uh, 10 thousandths of an inch tolerance underneath there. Uh, my bed, 11 thousandths of an inch tolerance. And it's about the size of a BB. And the smaller one, which if we had the model carburetor that required 
the bearing to go down in here. That smaller one would actually go down in there. Same thing with this one. Two prongs line up with this groove right there. Set that down. But don't forget your little shim. You don't want fuel coming out of there. Tighten that down until it's snug. You don't want to tighten that too tight because it might warp some of that metal. And from here, flip it over. And this is where we start to put on your throttle body and your accelerator pump. This kind of gets a little difficult when trying to line up your accelerator pumps and, and these things that go over it. So we're gonna be doing our best to uh, kind of show you some tips as we learn how to do the best way as possible. I'm gonna wipe this down one more time. It's a little bit wet from sitting in parts cleaner. It's a nice once over, especially on the gasket surface. You don't want that being wet because that fluid might create a little bit of a gap in there. And you don't want that. So again, we get our gasket and want to line it up like this. Now in the last video we explained because in this kit, it comes with many gaskets. We explain that you need to figure which holes and, and line up every single hole uh, to this gasket now. And now she's on the right way. So after a little bit of confusion and wild man laughing at me, uh, it's just a matter of orientation. Now all of the corners, all of the holes, they all line up. Now don't be worried if there's holes that kind of go to just the casting on here. That's no big deal. They go to nothing anyways. You got her? She is seated in. And this was six different screws with no gaskets that go to all of them. But they do have washers. So verify before you put all of these in that every one of your screws does have a washer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from here, so the next part is the accelerator pumps. The first part of here is your spring. Put your spring in there, make sure it's centered. You're gonna take your accelerator pump with the, uh, the recessed part or the indented part, and you're going to put that so that the spring sits in there, like so. And you wanna do that on both sides. Make sure that these are not over top like that. You want them on the other side. So these nuts you want down. And then you can take your top of your accelerator pump and line it up. Because remember, this is the entire reason we were rebuilding this carburetor is because of an accelerator pump leak. So we wanna make sure that we definitely get this part right. So Wild Man's going to clean off these screws for us just to guarantee that we've got a real good uh, contact with those. And if it helps you, what I'm doing is I'm going to put the screws inside the accelerator pump housing, and then I'm going to line the gasket up. And then after that is all done, line everything up with the holes to thread it into. It was taking a little bit too long to try to line everything up all at once. So I'm gonna do it one at a time as Wild Man cleans off these screws. Now a method that I use to find the threads, if it's uh, something like this where it's kind of hard, is I will actually turn the screw reverse until I feel it uh, seat itself, and then I will start threading it in the correct way. I also want to make sure that this is facing outward and sitting on top of that right there. make extra special care to tighten these down in a cross pattern to get a good contact on this. And I'm also going to go over it and make sure that every screw is snug considering that these were giving us uh, problems with leaking in the past. And that is, like I said, the reason that we rebuilt this carburetor. Same thing on this accelerator pump. I'm going to line up all the screws into the housing and from there I can take my gasket, flip it over off of there, and line it up with these screws. And then line everything all at once up with the rest of the accelerator pump. What are you going to do with the leftover parts? Well, that's up to you, Wild Man. This is your rebuild kit. I'd feed them to the dog. <laughs> Don't feed spare car parts to your dogs, fellas. That was a joke. Like I said, I'm a funny guy, but looks aren't everything. I can't get by in this world on my looks alone. 
And the same thing for this side. I'm gonna tighten them up in a cross pattern as to get a good contact surface for that gasket. Now I am taking extra special care to make sure that these screws are tight because again, especially this one, which would be on the driver's side, this accelerator pump right here was the one that was leaking. So I wanna make sure that these are secure. With all of your things secure, last thing that I am going to do is reinsert needle and seat. Now we were going to put the new needles and the new seats in, but these ended up being a little bit different. Now there's supposed to be a screw that goes in here uh, on, you know, probably older model carburetors. Uh, these needles and seats would be two separate pieces, a, a screw that would fit in here and the seat itself. Um, our needles and seats were a little bit different, so we're going to just install them uh, back after cleaning them and ensure that we've got a cleaner needle and seat than we had before. And you will hit a point here where, where these uh, seats will stop threading in. That is okay. That's exactly what you want. And from here, you will take the nut that goes on the top of it and it goes groove side down onto that. Now, you'll notice when you start putting these on that the seat will start to spin as you spin uh, the nut. So, what you're gonna wanna do is use a screwdriver to hold that down as you tighten the nut. Slightly different screwdriver here. A little less bulky one. And a good rule of thumb is before these are tuned, try to keep uh, the seat screw uh, parallel to the sides of your fuel bowl. And that'll kind of give you a good baseline as to where to start. And I'm just going to go hand tight because we are going to be tuning this carburetor after we put it on the engine. So this does not have to be perfect just yet. Same thing on this side, use a screwdriver to hold it down and hand tight is all you need it. Now with your needles and seats installed, that concludes rebuilding a Holly 650 double pumper carburetor. Like, comment, and subscribe. Um, follow us on Instagram at ch.customs. Hit the little bell icon so you never miss another video. We've got a lot of cool tutorials coming your way. Thank you guys for watching and have a great night.